Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the last topic of acid, alkali, and salt. Oxides. What are oxides or how? what's the definition of oxide? Compound. Which contain carb oxygen and other elements. So if a compound is having oxygen and other element, it can, and this other element can be metal or it can be a non-metal, both possibilities are there. What we call that compound, we call that compound as oxide. Like example, sodium oxide, which is Na2O, calcium oxide, CaO, sulfur dioxide, SO2, nitrogen monoxide, NO, carbon dioxide, CO. So all of these compounds are known as oxide. Why? Because there is oxygen and other element. And this other element can be a metal or a non-metal. Both possibilities are there. It's not fixed. Only metal will be there. It can be metal or it can be non-metal. So element with oxygen are known as oxides. These oxides are divided into four categories. Some of the oxides are known as basic oxide or also known as metal oxide. Some of the oxides are known as acidic oxide or non-metal oxide. Some of the oxides are known as amphoteric. oxides and the last one is known as neutral oxide. So oxide means the compound which contain carbon and oxygen and these oxides are divided into four categories. Basic oxide or metal oxide, acidic oxide or non-metal oxide, amphoteric oxide and neutral oxide. What is the difference between these oxides? If we have a basic oxide or a metal oxide, it contain metal, that's one thing. And this type of oxide can react with acid only no reaction with alkali. So what is a basic oxide or a metal oxide? First thing, it contain metal. And what is the second thing in terms of chemical property? This type of oxide can react with acid, but this cannot react with an alkali. So example, we have sodium oxide. So sodium oxide contain metal. Or it's also called a metal oxide. If I add an acid, there will be a reaction between them. They will react with each other. But if I add an alkali to this sodium, hydrox sodium oxide, so there is no reaction it will not react with an alkali and the type of oxide which can only react with acid and does not react with an alkali and it contain a metal with oxygen, we call this oxide as metal oxide. Is it clear the definition of metal oxide?
the second type of oxide is known as acidic oxide acidic oxide it's opposite of basic oxide what will happen this acidic oxide it contain a non metal and this type of oxide can react with alkali only but no reaction with acid so it does not react with acid if we add an acid it won't react only it reacted with an alkali and it contain a non metal like example how you can identify whether an element which is present with oxygen is a metal or non metal so as we discuss metal group 1 you will check the group the periodic table will be there in exam so you can check group 1 group 2 group 3 and there is another type of metals which is called transition we will discuss this part in the next chapter periodic table so if it is group 1 2 3 or transition means that element is a metal but for to be a non metal means it belongs to group 4 5 6 7 8 9 8 but group 8 oxide you don't find group 8 oxide why because group 8 is un the elements which are present in group 8 they have complete outer shell so chemically they are unreactive or does not react so if a oxide contain a non metal like example sulfur dioxide so2 if i add an acid will it react if i add an acid is there a reaction when sulfur dioxide is a non metal oxide i am adding an acid will it react so there is no reaction with acid and if i add an alkali it will react so this type of oxide which can only react with an alkali but does not react with acid we call that as non metal oxide or acidic oxide why it's called a non metal oxide because it contain a non metal then there are some oxides which contain a metal amphoteric oxide they also contain metal but there's a difference insoluble in water but react with both acid and alkali so this type of oxide which also contain a metal and it is insoluble in water does not dissolve in water and it can react with both acid and alkali this is called amphoteric oxide there are more amphoteric oxides but in your course outline you should know the name of three amphoteric oxide what are the three amphoteric oxide zinc oxide aluminum oxide and lead oxide you have to learn these oxides which are amphoteric what's the meaning of amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxide means if i add an acid to them they will react if i add an alkali it will also react so there are more amphoteric oxide but your course outline you should learn only three of them which is zinc 
aluminium and lead. And there is a last type of oxide which does not react with acid or alkali. So no reaction with acid or alkali and this type of oxide is known as a neutral oxide and the only neutral oxide is carbon monoxide, CO. So if you add an acid to this, if you add an acid, there is no reaction. If you add an alkali, there is no reaction. So it's easy to remember this table. Just memorize the examples of amphoteric oxide and neutral oxide. And other one you can simply work out Magnesium oxide is basic oxide, not amphoteric, because the condition is that first thing, it should be insoluble in water. The second thing, it should react with both acid and alkali. But when you check magnesium oxide, magnesium oxide can react with acid, but it does not react with an alkali. That's why magnesium oxide is considered as a basic oxide, not an amphoteric. So the easy way to learn this table just learn the example of amphoteric oxides. Keep in your mind like amphoteric oxide, zinc, aluminum, and lead. And then if there is a metal inside, then it will be basic oxide. If there's a non-metal, then it will be acidic oxide. Is it clear? So we'll do some questions related to this oxide part. So oxide can be basic or a metal. It can be acidic or a non-metal. Amphoteric can react with both acid and alkali and neutral does not react with acid or alkali. Question two, what could be the answer? Which rule describe whether an amphoteric oxide react with acid and, al and base? What could be the answer for this? Everyone should participate so that it shows your understanding of the topic. Don't worry that maybe your answer might be wrong. It's not an issue because, but your participation is important to show your understanding. So you can see react with acid, yes. React with an alkali or base, yeah, yes. So D is the right answer. Yes, you can take the screenshot. What could be the answer for question six? So react with hydrochloric acid, that's true. React with sodium hydroxide, that's also true. So A is a right answer.
which oxide is amphoteric oxide in this example so i told you just learn three examples which is there zinc aluminum and lead so a is the right answer this is a metal oxide you can see a metal is there so it means it is a basic oxide sodium is also a metal and it is not one of them like aluminum zinc or lead so that is also basic and uh, for sulfur you can see a non metal is there that's also a basic sorry acidic but the last one is not basic it's acidic so germanium oxide is a white powder what could be the answer question 15 what could be the answer germanium oxide is a white powder so as you can see it is reacting with acid it is reacting with an alkali and does not dissolve so what gives an idea it is amphoteric in dissolve here refers to that it is reacting uh, react with because the oxide react with acid react with an alkali does not dissolve in water so if an oxide react with both acid and alkali we call that as amphoteric oxide question 19 so question 19 an oxide react with both acid and alkali so this is amphoteric oxide react with acid so it is basic oxide react with an alkali so it is acidic and does not react with acid or that's so it's neutral so b is a right answer in which row are the oxide correctly identified so you can see sulfur is a non metal so it will form acidic oxide carbon dioxide non metal it will also form acidic where calcium is a metal basic magnesium is a metal also basic that's why c is a right answer some of the parts in this question are related to the other chapter so that we will skip
we'll specifically solve the topic the part which you already studied now so some oxides uh, some oxide some oxide of some elements are listed so oxides are given answer the following question using only oxide from the list each oxide may be used once more than once or not at all give the formula of an oxide that you just have to write which is a main cause of acid rain that you will study in air and water chapter any idea those who want to just guess this but this you will study in air topic so sulfur dioxide is there cause an acid rain next which would give a solution ph 14 means which oxide will dissolve and make a strong alkali we have because basic oxide will dissolve in water make a strong make an alkali but which will make strong we have sodium oxide magnesium oxide aluminium is an amphoteric so sodium oxide will dissolve in water and it will make the solution alkaline basic magnesium oxide sparingly soluble or slightly soluble so does not affect the ph too much which is colored this part you will learn in periodic table you will find the transition element there are certain types of uh, elements which form a colored compound so in this example chromium is a transition element so it will form colored compound or colored oxide which is amphoteric leave this part major impurity there are certain parts which you are not which you cannot answer now because that's related to next chapter so which is amphoteric only the part which you studied you will answer that which one is amphoteric so aluminum oxide and which one of them is neutral carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide the next part amphoteric oxides and neutral oxide are different from each other what is meant by the term amphoteric oxide what's the meaning of amphoteric oxide so the oxide which can react with both acid and alkali and amphoteric oxide can react with both acid and base or acid and alkali we call that as amphoteric oxide and what is meant by the term neutral oxide the oxide cannot react with acid and alkali or does not react with acid or alkali so these are the questions related to topic oxide so we are done with this chapter acid alkali and salt this is very important chapter uh, your paper 6 especially paper 6 you will find a question sometime 15 or 20 mark or 18 mark question from this chapter in paper 6 which is about identification of the ions i told you as a weekly homework that uh, memorize the test for the ions so we will discuss some of the questions so that you can recall what you have studied
Okay, solid P is aluminium salt and was analyzed. Test on solid P and some of the observations are shown. So we test the solid P and we observe certain things. Solid P was divided into three portions. The first portion was, this is aluminium salt. So we divide this into three portion and the first portion of a solid P was heated observations. Any gas given off tested with a cobalt chloride. Actually, what is this? This is related to the cobalt chloride paper. This is a test to check the presence of the water. So I'm skipping this part. Reason for that. This is related to air and water topic. I'll only discuss the part which is related to identification of the ions. The solution was divided into four equal portions. The following tests were carried out. This is an aluminum salt and we carried out the following test. Several drops of sodium hydroxide were added to the first portion of a solution. An excess of sodium hydroxide was added. What will be the observation if we have aluminum salt? If we have aluminum salt and we are adding several drops of sodium hydroxide. So first what it will form? It will first form white PPT and the precipitate dissolves, which will form a colorless solution. So first you will, because it's whites of three marks, so mentioning white PPT, like origin, because we are adding drops until it is in excess. So first it will form white precipitate, which dissolves in excess to form colorless solution. The test for several drops of aqueous ammonia were added to the second portion. We add aqueous ammonia. What will be the observation if we add aqueous ammonia to a salt which contain aluminum? So white precipitate, which does not dissolve in excess. So white precipitate will be there and which does not dissolve in excess or precipitate insoluble. <coughs> Two further tests were carried out on the and the following observation were made. We add a dilute nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. What is this test for? Which ion we are testing here if we add silver nitrate or barium nit uh, lead nitrate? So this is a test for halide ion, test for halogen or test for group 7 element. There is no visible reaction, no change. So if there is no visible reaction, no change. So what it gives an idea, this gives an idea that it does not contain halide such, and it means no chloride, bromide or halide or iodide. Then a dilute nitric acid followed by barium nitrate. What is this test for? Nitric acid followed by barium nitrate. So this is a test for sulfate ion. So it's a test for sulfate. If it gives a white precipitate, it means that sulfate ion is present. These white precipitate are due to barium sulfate, but it confirmed the presence of sulfate ion. What does TEL5 tell you about P? So what this gives, it gives an idea that there is no halide. Identify solid P. So how to identify solid P? 
because we identify there is a sulfate and in the beginning we know it is aluminium they mention in the question so this compound is actually or this salt is actually aluminium sulfate is it clear you can write a formula but my advice when you are writing a name of a compound write in words reason for that for example if you write a formula aluminium sulfate maybe you wrote like this so if your formula is not correct then you will lose the mark so it's better when you are writing the name there's no chance of getting a wrong answer because aluminium sulfate so you don't have to show the formula but maybe if you write a formula you make a small mistake writing the valence is so that you will in that case you will lose the mark and describe the appearance appearance for solid they are all like example group 1 2 and 3 solid are white solids okay in this one question number 2 two solution s and solution t solution s is a dilute hydrochloric acid the test on the solution s and solution t and some of the observations are shown test on solution s it's a hydrochloric acid that is given solution s was divided into four equal portions in four test tubes the following tests were carried out complete the observation for test 1 to 4 the ph of the first portion as we know it is a strong a hydrochloric acid or strong acid so for strong acid you can write a ph from 0 to 2 for a strong acid so any number you can write you can mention ph 1 or you can mention ph 2 so you wrote ph is equal ph is already written so i just have to write a number i'll write 2 copper oxide was added to a second portion of the solution the mixture was heated what is the observation so what are the observation if you have if you have hydrochloric acid and you add hydrochloric acid to copper oxide metal oxide so metal oxide plus acid it will give salt solution which will be copper chloride plus water so what will be the observation here because copper oxide or metal oxide is solid this is aqueous this will be aqueous and water is liquid so what we will observe the metal oxide or the solid dissolve and these metals which are also known as transition metals they form colored solution so what it will form it will form a color solution so whites of two mark one is for mentioning the solid dissolved which is metal oxide group 1 2 3 if there was group 1 2 or 3 metal would react with acid then if a solution is formed it will form colorless solution but any other metal like the transition metal when it react
when any other metal react with acid it will form a salt solution and these salt solutions will be colored you can mention a blue solution form that's also correct or you can mention a colored solution form that's also acceptable test tube 3 sodium carbonate was added to the third portion of a solution you have sodium carbonate so metal carbonate reacted with acid hydrochloric acid because the solution s in the question they mention solution s is a dilute hydrochloric acid so sodium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid what will be the product metal carbonate plus acid if metal carbonate is reacting with acid what are the product products carbon dioxide will be there salt will be there and water so sodium chloride nacl that's right carbon dioxide and water so it will form i'm not balancing the equation i'm just completing the equation so what is the observation here sodium carbonate here solid this is aqueous this will be aqueous gas liquid so what we will observe and the gas was also tested so solid dissolve and it gives fizz bub bubbles effervescence the gas tested because as we know carbon dioxide is there the gas tested with lime water which turned milky is it clear this part yes yeah, so a solid dissolve bubbles are observed and the gas is a carbon dioxide as and the, as we know the test for the carbon dioxide is a lime water and the lime water will turn milky sir yes so can we write that uh, a white solid is formed white solid you cannot say a fifth why you cannot say white solid because uh, what happened this is aqueous solution so when aqueous solution is there it will form a colorless solution if it was insoluble salt then you will mention white solid form but sodium chloride as we discussed the table uh, most chlorides are soluble except silver mercury and lead so this is a soluble chloride so when it will form it will dissolve instantly so you don't observe a white solid you will observe a colorless solution is there but why colorless solution is not a valid observation because already hydrochloric acid which was there is also colorless hydrochloric acid is colorless when you add a solid the solid will dissolve and still the solution remain colorless so it's not an observation like this is not the change which you observe that's why it is not acceptable to say a colorless solution formed is it clear yes sir it's clear thank you the next part dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate as we know this is hydrochloric acid so contain a chloride ion so the substance that contain a chloride ion and we are adding a silver nitrate or if we add lead nitrate what this result this will result in a formation of silver chloride so if silver chloride is formed what is the observation when silver chloride is formed this was aqueous this is also aqueous a solid and aqueous so silver chloride what's your observation so you will observe white ppt or white precipitates so it should have a white ppt or white precipitate and these white precipitates are due to silver chloride is it clear
Okay, in the next part, test on so, uh, tests were carried out on solution T. So solution T appearance is a colored solution. If something is having a colored solution or a colored compound, so it cannot be, it does not contain group one, two, or three, because group one, two, three, their solutions are colorless. If if it form a compound. and that compound is soluble in water so they are colorless solution so this is a colored solution so this confirm that this compound does not contain an element from group 1 2 or 3 now sodium hydroxide drops of aqueous sodium hydroxide were added to the second portion and we observe a red brown precipitate what give this gives an idea if red brown precipitates are there and you add sodium hydroxide what this gives an idea so it shows because iron 2 is dirty green iron 3 is red brown yeah iron ion is there that's true but you have to specify because iron can be plus 2 in your course you can you have learning two ions of iron iron can be plus 2 it can be plus 3 so which one is there if it is red brown ppt so this confirm that iron 3 is there so you have to be specific like which iron iron 2 or 3 if it is dirty green precipitate then iron 2 will be there red brown iron 3 Excess of sodium. When we add an excess, the precipitate does not dissolve. That's why it is written no visible change. Like precipitate insoluble, or you can also mention no visible change. So we it confirmed that it contain iron three ion. Sodium hydroxide and aluminium foil was added. So this is a test for which ion. When we add sodium hydroxide and aluminium foil and heat, this is a test for which ion. So this is a test for nitrate ion. A pungent gas is ammonia, and this confirms nitrate ion is present. Gas is ammonia, and the ion which is present or responsible for this reaction is nitrate. So what is solution T? So it is iron three nitrate. Here, because when you are writing a for a transition element. as it can be iron 2 or iron 3 so you have to use when you are writing a name so it will be iron and you have to write the valency or the charge for this iron iron 3 nitrate is it clear so this is related to memorizing the test for the ions once you memorize this question is very easy if you learn all the tests for the ions you just have to write the observation sometime or sometime using the observation you have to work out the formula for the compound so this is all about topic acid alkali and salt we conclude this topic uh, i will share another link after 5 minutes and start a new chapter which is periodic table so there's a 5 minutes break and then i'll share the another link and start the new topic